What's up guys, how you doing? This is Philip Starrett and today I thought why not make a wee video, it's been a while and I thought what can I make it on? Well recently I've been using OKEHTP3 okay, and HTTP2 uh, within that and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how cool HTTP2 is but also how actually OKEHTP3 okay, handles that with in terms of its threading model the concurrency performance improvements you'll get and all that good stuff and how that works how that kind of asynchronous fragment based HTTP2 works with a request response blocking model within like normal Tomcat or web application servers I'm just gonna have a wee drink here with my nice farm mug and then I'm gonna get started oh, that's good stuff green tea so let me get started. I get my whiteboard. I'm gonna draw a wee bit. So you can first of all, let me just draw a few different threads here. So these are Tomcat user threads. So in your application, in a normal web application, you have say 200 of these. Now, when you want to make a request to an external kind of service over HTTP/2, say this is the service here. This is the service you want to post to. Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to actually look at the library, which is OKHTP3, okay, okay, HTTP and you say, okay, we're making a request to an address A. Well, do we actually have an address A within the connection pool of OKHTP3? Okay, How it does that is it looks at the address and compares the address to all the connections, addresses we have, and performs some other logic to see if you can reuse that connection. For example, if it's only CTP1, it's going to be maybe a limit how many people can reuse the connection, typically one per thread. Um, you want to check that you have access, maybe the right to buffer, or it could be anything. There's a little piece of logic within that. And it, since it's version 4, it's actually in the Kotlin library. But if you're using HTTP2, because we can reuse connections, because we're going to be sending fragmented packets across, so we're going to send ordered packets across the network with an HTTP2 stream um, we can reuse and share that connection between many different threads so for example if there already is a connection in here so connection 1 well that connection will be able to be used by thread 1 now if thread 2 is also talking to the same address well it can actually be reused at the same time by thread 2 so you can say thread 1 and thread 2 are actually sharing this connection. So how does that actually work and how do these actually block? So what actually happens is okay HTTP 3 will actually you will write to the server on the application thread and what happens is there's actually a write lock you can think of so here's the server so you can think of it here there's actually this write lock and what that does is that will guarantee that only one application thread will write at any time and that's to ensure that the correct packets are sent across the network so they're pushed across the network and um, like you know in proper pieces rather than half of this and half of that how's it going to know right and one other thing i forgot to mention is the http connection pool is super important because there's such thing as like a congestion control within tcp and what that does is basically when you first initiate a connection to a remote server it's going to send some packets across you're going to get some packets back and then you're going to send more across and more back so you're going to kind of like warm up send more and more and then you actually send the request and then you get the response but with connection pulling once this kind of is done so it's the server it's the client once this is done then you actually send the request response. So this means that you can reuse this without having to redo this on every server attempt. So this is normal HTTP and this is why you use a connection pool in HTTP. But say for example if we go back to this level, um, what happens is once the application lure thread has the write lock, so re-enter lock um, on the writer, well, what that does is that's going to write that across to the server and after it's wrote across to the server what it's going to do is then it's going to hold the lock 
on the HTTP2 connection and then it's going to actually update the state of the connection so it's going to update how many bytes it wrote to the connection and various other pieces of information and it's very important that this does this in like a complete non-blocking fashion there's no IO calls or anything done by holding this lock it's simply just changing the internal state of the HTTP2 connection and you must make sure that it holds the HTTP writer connection first before touching the HTTP connection because you can imagine that if you have the lock to the connection and then you hold the lock to the right but the right blocks because there's no TCP buffer size left well then you're, chain, you're holding the connection the lock on the HTTP2 connection which is then going to block everything because you can't read now from that connection so now you're, you could have a deadlock state when either the server and the response is actually working so it's very important to have the lock in the correct order but now you're probably thinking okay so you've made the application thread request and we can't actually block on the on the read with the same application there because the, it's going to share the same socket so these are actually sharing the same writes and responses well, what happens is in OKHTTP, once you've done the, the write, well, what's it, it's going to create an HTTP, I think it's HTTP2 or HTTP stream object. And what that's going to do is return that to the application level thread. But in this thread level, it's going to call await. So this is the secret sauce. This is the secret piece of information. Once it calls the wait, the, the thread is actually now blocked waiting until someone calls uh, a notify or notify all within that object. So what happens is in OKHTP there's a thread, a single threaded reader and what that's going to do is basically just read, 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 read up the socket and then what it does is there's a typically not always but in most use cases there's a pull, there's a connection or a thread pull of threads and what that does is that's just going to read and dispatch. And what it does is dispatches it to the thread pull. Well it's then the thread pull is then gonna say, okay, this is this is actually the response of the body, so of the from the server. And what we want to do is then take the body and we're gonna take the stream ID, which is sent across, and that's a sequential stream ID, and that's an EC2 HTTP2 spec. So it's gonna take the ID of the response, then look it up in the kind of map of IDs to streams, it's then going to fill in the response and the headers and everything like that and then it's going to call a notify, notify all, which then wakes up the application or thread which was blocked and therefore it can now deserialize that and say Jackson, Jason, whatever you want and then your application or thread continues. So that's how two threads um, can share and send over HTTP too. So what that means is if two threads are writing, they both have access, well then they want to write to the writer. Well one will be one will have the write lock, it then writes to the to the stream, it then will update the HTTP to HTTP2 connection with some information about what's actually happened. Then it blocks number two, number thread two comes in, it then takes the writer lock, it writes number two. And then what happens is the socket that's constantly being read, any payloads that have been coming in from that same socket are getting read off, dispatched into the thread pool. Thread pool then says, okay, take for what ID, fill in HTTP stream, and wake up the thread, and it continues. So this is awesome. You get the full performance benefits of reusing the connection between many threads. You don't have context switching. You can remember the HTTP one, if you have one thread, say per request, you make the thread, you block, you read, and there you go. You've got all this context switching now going on your CPUs. Well, in this, you just have to put your threads to sleep. They will wake up, they'll block at this level. And also, there's not there's only a handful of threads, that depend what you tune this to, actually going on. So I use this for my HTTP2 client. Um, you can tune it a little bit, depending on different thread pull sizes, and of course your server that you're writing to, you know, what is TCP buffer size, how quickly it can read requests and actually respond to them. So, um, 
but I read through this for the first time. It was actually in Java, and then I had a look a couple of days ago, and then it was nice. It was in Kotlin, um, so changed a little bit. Some some of the logic between if you can reuse connections seemed to change a little bit, but it all seemed pretty pretty cool. So I hope that guys shared a little bit of light on how some HTTP2 connections kind of work in OK HTTP3 library. I'm a fan of it, I hope you are too. And I just want to say that I'll be making a GraphQL series where I'll be walking through um, every single thing about Spring Boot GraphQL from creating a schema, um, a schema first design to actually creating your applications, Facebook data loaders, sharing multi across threads, um, how we you can use the multiplexing, which I've just explained, so multiple connections, or multiple threads sharing a connection and the responses, how that's going to be used as well, how you can put in some gRPC services, the GraphQL, error handling, uh, all that good stuff. So, take it easy guys, hope you have a good evening, and I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.